Hello, everyone. It's Lori Staley, Addicted Stampin' with Stampin' Up, and it is Tuesday night at 8, so it's time for After Dinner with Lori. Hey, if you are on, give me a shout out, a like, a um, thumbs up, whatever works for you. Let me know that you're here with me. It's always a little bit easier when I know that I have folks on with me. Just going to do one quick thing here. My system's running really slow tonight, so I'm hoping it doesn't give us any issues. Okay, I think that's better. All right, great. So I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping while you're hopping on and finding me. And then we're going to get right into our sneak peek project with the One Horse Open Sleigh collection that's coming to the stores, to our online stores. They're, it's an online exclusive product collection launching on July 6th. But until then, we still have the fabulous designer series paper sale happening right now, 15% off pretty much all of the designer series papers except the specialty papers and what I call the core, hey, Carol Deegan, what I call the core color, six by six packs of paper, right? So that would be our brights, our neutrals, our regals, our subtles, and of course our two in color collections. But all the rest of the designer papers are 15% off. That runs through the end of June, as does the special on our starter kit. Now our starter kit is a good deal no matter when, but from now until the end of June, instead of getting $125 in product for $99 plus tax, you're gonna receive $155 in product. So that is an additional um, $30. So it's like getting $56 free because you're only paying the 99 plus tax. And did you know you can put the die cutting machine in there, the big die cutting machine? which regularly is $128. It's not even available as a half price item on um, parties, but you can get it for $99 when you grab this deal. Plus you have, I think $27 left to um, play with and get a little, little bit of extra goodies, right? So if you don't have someone that you're working with and you're interested in hearing more about that, please reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have um, and get you that starter kit. It really is a no commitment, no fear uh, offer. And then, of course, the online exclusive. That's what we're going to be playing with tonight. This launches on July 6th. I have the One Horse Open Sleigh collection here that I'm going to share with you. Um, but there's lots of other goodies coming. And <clears throat> sorry, my voice is funky tonight. Um, we only could see as demonstrators, one of the perks as demonstrators is that we could pre-order. So we could see the One Horse Open Sleigh collection. And then there's also this really fun Timeless Charm Bundle, um, which I didn't get this one yet. I probably will, but I didn't get it in the pre-order that's available to demonstrators. Um, but I am anxious to share my project with you uh, tonight. I have one project with that. And then I'll tell you about my upcoming event using that product as well. Okay. Hi, Sharon. Thank you for sharing. Hello, Thelma. Thank you for sharing. And Betty. Thank you. Thank you. And Tina, hello, hello, everyone. Good to see you. Um, one last thing. We've made these fun cards together, right, last time. And the winner of these is Laura with Inky or Ink Fingers. So, Laura, I don't know if you are watching or not, but congratulations. Thanks so much for watching and commenting. And you are the winner. So uh, I need you to reach out to me with your address so I can pop these in the mail to you. Okay. All right. So let me just put your name on here. I did get all the mailings caught up today. They're all going out tomorrow. So if you've been waiting on something from me, it is coming. Um, including those of you that are in my in color club or my core color club. So those kits are either ready for pickup if you're local or they're going out in the mail tomorrow. So keep that in mind. All right. So let me show you the project that we're gonna make. Let me show you the stamp set and the dies first. So this is the horse and sleigh stamp set, really cute. The only thing I can't figure out is the love of bunnies at, at Christmas. Does anybody know, is there a story about the love of bunnies at Christmas time? I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not really sure. And then we have the dies. So we have this really big die that cuts out our sleigh and horse. And then we have a couple of stamped tree dies. The open ones are for the stamped images. 
We have one that is just a detailed tree that we can just die cut. We have an extra little goodie for the sleigh itself. And then some snow banks and a nice swirl that can go on your sleigh. And there's the bunny that you're gonna uh, stamp and die cut. So great set of dies as well to coordinate with that stamp set. And I have two more goodies in that collection to show you. Hey, Verna. One is the pack of designer series paper. So it is a six by six pack of designer series paper, 48 sheets for each of the different patterns. And they're very scenic <clears throat> on one side. Sorry, guys. Very scenic on one side and then neutral. Look at the wood grain. Oh, I love that. Love wood grain. Look at this one, so pretty. Look at the shadows down here, it's really cool. And then another nice neutral on the back. A little cabin in the woods. Another nice neutral and some reds, perfect for Christmas. I love, love, love this one. Look at the light coming out of that cabin. And then on the trees, lots of misty moonlight in here. Some mossy meadow, wild, even some wild wheat. Big open snowy field and another wood grain. This one is shooting down from above. Look, this is Santa's feet. I know it's Santa's footprints. You can't convince me differently. <laughs> and a nice mm, misty moonlight stripe. Oh, this is not gonna be good tonight, huh? This one reminds me more of fall with the colors of the sunset and then the little red leaves dropping, but there is snow on the ground. So an early snow perhaps. Whole party and some early espresso on this one. And then another nice neutral red pattern on the back. Another field, love this. Actually, this is the pattern we're using tonight. And then another nice red pattern for Christmas. All over trees. And look at that one, love it. Full party again, mossy meadow, neutral. And look at the little deer, isn't it cute? Just standing there looking at us. And then one more in the woods, put your sleigh going up the hill, right? And then another misty moonlight. So. Oh, you're very welcome. Hope you had a great birthday. So that is the pack of paper. It is gorgeous, right? And then the other product that is in that collection are these snowflakes. And I'm trying to angle them so that the light doesn't make it glare. You can actually see it. Hey, Carol, good to see you. Um, but it's copper, gold, and like a little bit of an iridescent white snowflake. They come in three sizes. Let's open this so you can see them a little better. They come in three sizes. Okay, so we have small, medium, and then the large on the back. And it looks like there are 10 of each color in each size. Uh, yeah, 10 in each size. So 10 large, 10 medium, 10 small, in the copper, in the gold, and in the iridescent white. All right, so that is the collection. It is beautiful. I'm sure you will agree with me that paper alone. Love, love, love that. There will be lots of other goodies coming on July 6th. As I said, we didn't get to see those. We only got to see the two that were available to us in the pre-order. But um, trust me when I say there's a little truck punch coming. We got a sneak peek at that at our demonstrator event on Saturday. I'm going to be shocked if that doesn't sell out. So if these are things that you think you might be interested in, July 6th is the launch. Um, I would go early in the morning <laughs> in the hopes of not being disappointed, right? All right, let me pull the card in now. This is what we're gonna make tonight. And of course I'm using the sleigh. I've got lots of bling on here. I, I uh, pearled up the horse harness, I've got a snowflake with an iridescent pearl in the center. And then I added a brush metallic dot over the greeting. One of the fields that we have in the designer series papers, our background with one of the standalone die cut trees out of smoky slate. Um, and then I just did a nice greeting on the inside. Misty moonlight is our card base. And of course that is just a five and a half by eight and a half. Okay. I'm gonna grab my bone folder. Give that a good crease. I did go ahead and cut down that one pattern that I said we'd be using today. So it's going to fit in our frame. And I just created that frame 
with a piece of basic white that I then use the deckled rectangles to create the opening in. Okay. This is one of those I haven't gotten on an adhesive sheet yet. So you can see lots of rectangles and I think I used, nope, I used this one. So we're gonna use that one. I think that is the third largest that I'm using from the deckled rectangles. Oh, thanks Thelma. And then my piece of basic white is going to be the five and a quarter by four, okay? When we run this through the die cutting machine, obviously I wanna center it from side to side, but I'm gonna keep it much closer to the top so we have some of that base down there, okay? And we're gonna run that through. So I'm gonna go over here to my die cutting machine. I keep that off to my left. If I put it on the table, I rock the table and the camera <laughs> when I die cut. I try not to do that to you, right? And we're gonna see how well Lori can get that lined up and even tonight. It's always a scary thing. Always a scary thing. I think I did all right. My post-it note tape helped hold it into place. I love my post-it note tape. If you haven't gotten any of that yet, it's better than washi tape. So this piece I now have to do something else with. So I'll create a card with that. We never throw anything away, right? Never, never, never. That is, <laughs> and trust me when I say that is true. <laughs> Nothing gets thrown away. Oh, thanks, Carol. I'm glad you like it. All right, so that's going to be our frame. I'm going to bring that up a little bit higher so I can hide that dark blue there. And, oh, I used it today and I put it away. Let me grab my um, foam adhesive strips. That's what happens when you continue to design uh, other projects or other live events or classes or clubs or whatever. And you forget that this came out of a kit. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna use the foam adhesive strips. You get two sheets in a package. These things are a godsend when doing something like this, because again, this section up here is a little bit more narrow, right? We did that intentionally. So it would be hard to fit dimensionals in there, even, um, even the mini dimensionals, it would be tough. And then we're just gonna do the sides. I'm gonna grab my scissors. And you'll find these foam adhesive strips in the annual catalog with all the other adhesives. So look, look there. I'll bring that the whole way out to the edge here almost. Okay. Not gonna worry about that tiny little piece. I know I could use it, but believe it or not, I'm gonna throw it away. And then we'll just do the center here on this end. There we go. And then I'll put this back in my sleeve. When you run out of the strips inside, guess what? You can use the outside edges, just like with the regular dimensionals. But this is gonna give us our lift. I'm not quite ready to mount that yet though. I did pre-cut the tree, okay? I just used that die that was in the horse and sleigh dies. And I'm going to use some of my fine tip glue or my Tombow glue and my fine tip applicator. That was the other thing I used today that I have to go grab. Um, this is a game changer. I'm going to get my silicone pad here. Well, at least I think I am. Yep, there it is. And we're just going to put a little glue on the back of this. And I'm not too worried about hitting every spot. I'm just kind of making sure there's a little bit of everywhere on the branches. 
And we're going to flip that over. And I'm going to put that right about here. Okay. So I kind of thought it tied in well with the grasses back here. Now we're going to line this up on our card front. We're going to grab a white though because I now have blue on my fingers. And that never works out too well, does it? I'm glad you guys like this. I love this set. And I'll show you more. I'll give you some additional peaks because I'm actually offering a class with this product, an in-person and a together. So that's gonna fit in there just perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this piece down. I love that red background too. That's gonna to make a great background on Christmas cards, don't you think? Okay. Now we'll peel these off. And just like the dimensional backings, these little strips will land everywhere. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up while you're here. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you. You can even ring the bell, that way you're notified when I am live or I load projects. So now we basically have our base all done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the greeting and before I lose those little circles, right? Because you know, that's what happens to me sitting right at the table and things just disappear. So we have Tis the Season and this is coming from Brightest Glow. And we're gonna use some Cherry Cobbler, believe it or not. I love that bundle too. Yes, ma'am. And I don't know, I don't know how many they've ordered. I don't know if they're anticipating how popular this might be, um, but you definitely are gonna wanna grab it sooner rather than later, come July 6th. So we're using Cherry Cobbler. I haven't used Cherry Cobbler in such a long time. You know, my Christmas designs, um, Cherry Cobbler is a great color for Christmas, I think. And, but they're usually dictated, the colors I use are usually dictated by the designer series paper. And we haven't had a lot of cherry cobbler in our designer series paper the last couple of years. So I just put the a snail, or snail, listen to me, seal, boy, there, I'm an old dog. I've been around a while. I'll be celebrating 20 years as a demonstrator in August, so it's been a while. There must be two elves, uh-oh. Are you losing things too? <laughs> I'm gonna put a dimensional there. Since this is raised up, that will help keep it all even, right? So just a dimensional down, kind of bottom left, and then adhesive on the top so we can pop this right into the corner. Okay. And we might as well go ahead and do the inside of our card while we're here, and then we'll work on our slide, right? I'm gonna put this stamp away so it does not wander off. And my inside greeting is also from that same Brightest Glow stamp set. That's, I'm glad that stamp set carried over. That's in the annual catalog. So you can grab that if you didn't get it last year, but it is a great greeting set. It has lots of good greetings in it. Yes, the elves are very busy. And just always remember, give yourself a second look before you stamp your inside to make sure that you have the cardstock in the appropriate orientation. Because I know, I guarantee you, I'm not the only one that has ever stamped the inside of their card in the wrong orientation. All right. So now we're gonna work on our beautiful sleigh. Now I'm going to use something that is no longer available, much to my sadness. Um, but if you have our Stamparatus, which is fabulous, and I'm so sorry that it's no longer available. If you have that, 
this is a great time to use it, right? This stamp is large, okay? You can use the big block. I mean, it would be the really big block, but for me, since I have this, this is gonna be my choice to use my stamp apparatus. If you do have the stamp apparatus and you haven't played with it very much, one of my tips for you is anytime you are inking up your image, just making sure I've got that where I want it, and I do, put a stamp case or an ink pad or something under the plate to make sure it stays nice and flat for you. Without it, and I don't know if it picks it up on camera, this is definitely sloping down and it's harder to get it inked well and it's also harder to keep ink off of the plate, which could potentially transfer to your cardstock. So if you do have this, make sure that you're, you know, putting something underneath it to help keep that plate straight. And I am inking this up with our memento because we're obviously going to be coloring with Stampin' Blends. That's my color medium of choice right now. And I'm gonna move my magnet up here. And rub all over and actually it hasn't wandered off. I, I know there's all kinds of different tools that you see people making and selling. I got a whiteboard eraser. I think I got two of these in a pack and I think it was like $5. Um, but this saves your hand, right? So if you're like me and you're getting a little bit older and Arthur's coming to visit, this helps to save your hand. Okay. Well, apparently I didn't rub hard enough. And that is the joy of the Stamparatus because we can re-ink this and do that again. Everything looks pretty good except for the people's heads. We decapitated the people's heads. That's never good. All right, this is interesting. Now I've made a lot of cards with this and I have not had this problem. <laughs> so of course I'm gonna have it while we're live. All right, let me clean this because obviously there's something on there that's rejecting the transfer of the ink. Uh, right here, let's do this. Get that cleaned up. The horse looks great. The sleigh looks great. We just have that one spot. So we're going to take that and get it all clean and try re-inking it. And again, thank goodness for the stamparatus because otherwise I'd be stamping this whole thing over and over and over. Okay, I am shocked <laughs> and surprised. There we go. Ooh, I'm not really sure what that is, but I will be doing a little bit of work on that stamp to make sure that that doesn't continue to happen. All right, so we're gonna set this aside because we're pretty much done with the Stamparatus at this time. And I do not have any magic by the magic of television tonight. So we are going to color. So here is a great opportunity if you have any kind of stamping questions while I color to ask me. I am using my stamping blends. I am someone who tends to use her bullet tip more than her brush tip. Um, that is the pointier end that you could actually write very well with versus the um, like the art marker end, which is more of a brush tip. I like to save those brush tips for when I absolutely need them. And to do this type of coloring, I don't absolutely need them. So I am using, I will tell you the colors as we go, I'm using Dark Misty Moonlight for his pants. And then I'm gonna use Light Misty Moonlight for his coat. And I'm not doing a whole lot of shading on this one. You can if you like, 
I am going to shade the sleigh a little bit just so we get a differentiation between that top edge, which I would think would be like velvet versus um, the sleigh itself. Oops, brush tip, not bullet tip. I mean, yeah, I want the bullet tip. So we have light fresh freesia. And I don't know if this is a blanket or her skirt. I thought it picked up the colors in the background of the paper very nicely. She has a little muff going here for her hands. So we're gonna use the dark. This is the dark Highland Heather. And then I used light smoky slate for the collar on her coat. We're gonna go back to light fresh freesia for her hat. And we're gonna do light cherry cobbler. Give him a Santa hat, right? There we go. I did grab a flesh tone. This is the, this was called SU800 um, prior to this catalog. And I really do need to find, my husband is doing something over here. I'm not sure what he's, what noise he's making there. Um, really do need to find a translation because I'm not really sure what SU500 translate, translates to in the dark and light and all of that that they call them now. I'm also using the smoky slate down here for where they tuck their little feet in and they're a little warmer. And then we're gonna go back to the light cherry cobbler. Just wanted to make sure it was actually the light. And we're gonna color the whole sleigh with this color. I love our blends. I love the saturation that we get with the blends. Um, of course, these are alcohol-based markers, so you can also do some fun techniques with them. It's like watching paint dry when someone's coloring, right? And I should have done a little bit of this in advance. I apologize. It was a very busy day in my studio today. All right, so there is our first base coat. Then I'm gonna come in with my dark cherry cobbler. Hey, Corinne, thank you. And I'm gonna follow this line, right? I'm gonna, this is how I'm gonna add my shading. I'm just gonna follow that down and around. And it already is giving me great shading. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna bleed that out while I add just a little bit more color beneath the line to give us a nice delineation between that top edge and the body of the sled or sleigh. And I think that does a great job. We've got a little shading going on there, plus the extra coloring changes the depth of the cherry cobbler, the light cherry cobbler. And that's the inside of the sleigh on the other side. Okay, so for our horse, I'm using, again, another SU number, SU 400, right? And we're just going to do him very quickly. I will come in with a little bit of shading here in a second. And I'm also going to use um, some wild wheat. I have found that the wild wheat is a great color for horses' manes and tails. I did a Facebook Live on Thursday, last Thursday, and we did the carousel horses. And I used that wild wheat on their manes and tails, and I really liked it. So we're going to continue with that. I'm trying to avoid the harnesses because we are going to make those some cherry cobbler color. And his nose is just going to be the same color. Oh, let's not forget his legs. What do we say here? Yeah. 
So nobody has any burning stamping questions. I'll tell you what, I had some wonderful people show up at the sale this weekend, but I was getting tested on my stamping knowledge. Some products mama had I never saw before. <laughs> Don't tell, but they were not stamping up. That was probably from before before we knew about stamping up. Okay, so again, wild wheat, this is the light wild wheat that I'm using on the tail and the mane. We're going to do some black for the hooves. So does anybody else think it's interesting that we have light and dark basic black blends? I truthfully cannot see a difference in them when I color with them. <laughs> anybody else? And then I do have a little pecan pie here. So where we see some of this shading, I'm gonna add some of that just to give us a little bit of depth. Not very much. And I probably won't even bleed that out. All right, we're gonna go back to the light cherry cobbler and we're gonna do that harness. And then we're gonna die cut this. So it didn't take all that long to color. Of course, the worst part is figuring out what colors you wanna use, right? Because we have all those amazing colors. Okay, there's our horse. I am gonna to try to see if right here, I can darken this up a little bit. That might mean I'm just gonna do the whole thing because I do want that to be nice and dark. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna grab that beautiful dye. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's bizarre because I really don't see a difference when I color with it. I'm gonna grab the die, he lines up perfectly. And I'm just gonna die cut this. Grab some more post-it note tape to hold it in place. You know, it's always risky when you die cut after you've colored. Because <laughs> if you mess that up, oh, you want to cry, don't you? Yeah, I know. I, I can't figure it out. I'm sure an artist would tell us the exact reason, but I just like to color. <laughs> All right, we're gonna bring in our card again, and this is going to get mounted right here. So I'm going to, before I do that, put on the silver foil. This is also in the online store um, that I thought it retired because it had been in the annual catalog but it is in the online store. So, you know, the silver pack that has the three different silvers in it, you can get that still, which will be great for Christmas. But I just wanted our sled to have a nice silver, um, you know, let sleigh there for the runner. I'll get the word. You can't remember how to clean your blocks. Oh, you mean your stamping blocks that you mount to? I do, uh, well, first of all, we'll use a baby wipe on them, one without alcohol or aloe vera. And uh, if that doesn't do it, then I'll put them in the sink with some Dawn dish soap. And that usually takes care of them. You don't want to use anything that has alcohol in it on your clear blocks, because if you do, they will craze over time, which means they'll start to like crackle. Um, and it makes it a little bit more challenging, as you can imagine, to see through the block to uh, stamp. And while we're talking about blocks and seeing through them, 
I just wanted to make sure, because um, we sold a lot of wood stamps this weekend, but we sold a lot more wood stamps after we put the sign up. And that was thanks to my girlfriend, Wendy, who did that for me, um, saying that you can unmount block uh, your stamps from your wood block. So if you have old sets that you just love and you haven't used them in forever because you don't want to deal with the wood block, you can absolutely unmount your stamps. The way you do that is you pop it into the microwave for about 10 seconds, maybe five seconds, depending upon the strength of your microwave, right? And you, it'll peel right off for you. And then you have that, that cushion is there, right? That we love for our clings. So then all you do is you can do two things. One, you can purchase the cling material that's in the annual catalog and put that on the side that was attached to the wood and it will cling to your clear blocks. Or you don't have to, you can use like temporary positioning tape on the back of it or even some Tombow liquid glue and let it get tacky before you mount it so it doesn't become permanently attached to your clear block. All right, so there is our sleigh with our horse. Now we're gonna bling it up. And I've got four different blings here. Can you believe it? This is something you really, really like. So hopefully, um, Verna, that helped answer the question and give that a try and it should work for you. So I have got red and green pearls, even though there is gold and silver in there, they call them red and green. And we are going to make our horse just have a lot of fun here. He's going to be a well-dressed horse. So we're putting them on all of his gear. And I went with the red because it ties into the harness that I put on him. Or reins, I guess I should say. So he gets all of that. He gets seven bling all by himself. <laughs> and then I have one of the silver metallic dots, brushed silver, I should say. And I think I used a big one. So let, let me grab one of those. Maybe. If I could get it to come up, that would be great. There we go. And we're just going to put that at the top. Okay. We're done with those. And then we're going to grab those snowflakes. This seems to be my favorite thing to do. I love to put a snowflake on the sleigh. grab one of those. Be careful when you pick these up that you do get the adhesive on the snowflake because it does come with an adhesive backing. That's why I always tell people to use the tip of your scissors or your take your pick tool. This is perfect for this um, because you can get under it or even the spatula on the take your pick tool, which is on the opposite end of your point, right? You guys did know that you can flip the ends, right? I did that at a class one time and somebody went, what? <laughs> like, no. Yes, yes, yes. Um, because then you don't leave the adhesive behind. And I don't know about you, but I sure don't want to try to put the adhesive back on a tiny little pearl or some other type of embellishment, right? All right, so we're done with that. And then the last thing is I didn't want that hole in the center. Hey there, Miss Debbie. Again, your first name is missing. <laughs> Um, so we're going to grab just one of the iridescent pearls. Since the snowflake is iridescent, I thought this was a perfect addition right in the center of the snowflake. How pretty is that card? And it really didn't take that much time. The coloring took the most, right? But I just love it. And then oh, I got nervous for a second. I thought I put it on upside down. And then we just have that on the inside. You can stamp a tree in here if you wanted to add some additional or put the tree on the envelope, right? So there's the card. Now I promised to show you a couple of other ideas with this particular product collection, right? So on July 15th, I am doing a double down Saturday is what I call them. And that is um, two classes. You can come and make two classes if you're, in, if you're local to me, all in one day. 
We run it from nine to 2.30. As long as you're done by 2.30, you can do both classes. What I recommend if you're doing both, one is a stamp a stack that you, um, you know, stamp everything, but don't necessarily put it all together because you can put it together at home, right? But yes, so it is, here's the cards that I made and they really feature the designer series paper that is part of this collection, right? So this is the first one with the little cabin. And remember we had that one design with the fox. Well, that gave me the idea to put the little fox on here from the reindeer set. So that's one, here's the second one. Again, I got the reindeer and I used the distress gold to cut him out. This was that beautiful wood grain, changed it up a little bit. And then here's our horse and sleigh on here in silhouette. So for this class, you're going to make four cards of each design. So you'll have 16 cards with envelopes. All the supplies are included. Um, you are going to receive some product as part of your class. Uh, it's a little bit over $20 in product, about $24, I think. You're gonna get, of course, a full pack of that beautiful designer series paper that I showed you at the beginning. So a full pack, 48 sheets. Now you will use these four patterns completely with some scraps left over in the class. You're also going to get um, the adhesive back snowflakes, the new package of those. So you're getting two of the new products right there. And then you're also gonna get a black marker because guess what? This is not the die cut. This is actually stamped and then we colored it in. So that is the class, it's $32. Um, if you are sending a check, if you're paying by PayPal, I do ask for 33. And if you are long distance, which you may absolutely get this long distance, really the only thing you would need is the horse and sleigh bundle, everything else, or just the stamp set even. Everything else, you could substitute whatever words you wanted because all the die cutting, embossing, et cetera, is done for you in the class. I will have the link below for that if you are interested in that. Again, we can absolutely do to go. All the information is in the registration. So check that out. The other class that I'm doing that day as well is also part of the Double Down Saturday, and that is a Christmas frame art. Um, I was in retail years and years and years ago. And so Christmas in July was big. So I'm doing Christmas in July. But this frame art, I actually designed last year and I ran out of time to share it with you guys. So I decided to offer it again this year, even though there is some retired product in there. Of course, those products will be available at the class if you're able to attend in person. If you can't attend in person, you can still order the class. We can ship it. Um, there is additional shipping charge. And you can substitute, or you may have what I used, right? You're going to receive, though, a full pack of the red and green pearls, okay? The frame, all the supplies, everything's die cut, pre-cut, all of that for you. You're also going to get about 40 of the red rhinestones. And instead of this twine, which I thought was discontinued, and it's not, but I said I would give this instead, um, we're going to do the trim from the online store as well, the gold trim. So it'll be a little wider, but everything else is included in the kit and you can find the registration information for that as well in the uh, link below. So if you're interested in either one of those, please register. Um, you can send, as I said, via payment via check or you can PayPal me and registrations are due by the end of day on July 5th so that on July 6th, I can order right away before everything sells out. All right. Hey, guys, thanks so much for tuning in tonight. I hope you enjoyed the project. Um, if you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, leave me a comment whether you're live right now with me or whether you're watching the replay. And then I will draw for a winner of this project before we go live again next. Oh, we won't be live next week. I realize next week is July 4th. You guys will probably all be picnicking and fireworking, right? Um, so I won't be live next Tuesday, but I will be live in two weeks. So be sure to come back then. And uh, in the meantime, I'll be live over on my Facebook channel uh, Sunday night at eight. So you can join us over there. That's Lori Staley, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. Thanks so much, guys. Have a safe evening and a great rest of your week. And I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.